Hello everyone. In this video lesson, we will look at a numerical example of the ordinary least squares method. By the end of this lesson, you will learn to apply the method of ordinary least squares to estimate regression coefficients in a simple linear regression setup. So we start with a table of three columns, observations, y, and x. y happens to be the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, n equals 10, which represents the sample size or the total number of observations. You need to keep in mind the stochastic specification of the population regression function and that of the sample regression function, which we used through the method of ordinary least squares to derive the regression coefficients, the slope and that of the intercept respectively. We need to go ahead and calculate the mean of x and mean of y, but first we have to sum the values of y and x. So the sum of y values is 1,110 and the sum of x values is 1,700. We will use these sum values to calculate the mean of y and the mean of x using the formula that is shown on the screen. So we substitute the sum of y and divide by the total sample size, which is 10, we get the mean of y to be 111. We also go ahead and substitute the sum of x into the formula, we divide by the sample size, we get the mean of x to be 170. So we now need to expand the columns for our table to include the deviation of x, where we will have to take each x value and subtract the mean of x from those values. After that, we sum these values and we get the deviation, the sum of the deviation of x to be zero. Now, this will have some useful properties later on in later video lessons. We can also go ahead and expand the column to include the deviation of y, where we subtract the mean of y from each value of y. When you also go ahead and sum the deviation of y, you end up getting the result to be zero. We expand the column to include the square of the deviation of x. So all we have to do is square each value of the deviation of x, and we go ahead and sum this value. So the sum of the deviation of x, we had the result to be 33,000. We expand the column to also include the product of the deviations of x and y. We sum the values and we end up getting 16,800. Now let us go ahead and extract each of these values that will be useful for calculating the regression coefficients. So we ended up getting the sum of x the sum of y, the mean of x, the mean of y, the sum of the square deviations of x, and the sum of the product of the deviations of x and y. Now, in the regression coefficient, the formula for calculating the slope coefficient, we go ahead and substitute the sum of the product of the deviations of x and y, 16,800. We divide by the sum of the square deviation of x, 33,000, and we end up getting the result to be 0 0.5091. We also go ahead and use the formula for calculating the intercept coefficient. So we substitute the mean of y minus, then the regression coefficient for the slope 0 0.5091 multiplied by the mean of x, 170. And when we perform the calculation, we end up getting 24.453. Now using the estimated regression coefficients for the slope and intercept, we can substitute this into what we call the regression equation or the estimated y. So y hat equals 24.453 plus 0.5091x. Now based on this regression equation, we would ask ourselves, how do we interpret the regression coefficients? So when we take into consideration the intercept, you realize that when x equals zero, when you substitute this into the regression equation, you end up getting the value for the intercept, 24.453. So this is how you interpret it. The predicted y is estimated to be 24.453 when x equals zero. Now, what about the slope? The slope shows the change in estimated y for a unit change in x. So since the regression coefficient for the slope is positive, you would say 
the estimated y increases by 0.5091 when x increases by one unit. So this is how you get to interpret the intercept and the slope coefficients respectively. Now, the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable can be depicted in a graph called the scatter plot, where each point represents an observation. Here, we superimpose every single observation on the point. So for example, the first observation for y and x is 70 and 80, which represents this point here on the graph. And the 10th observation, which happens to be the last observation, the value of y is 150 and the value of x is 260. And this is also represented by the point here on the graph. So the regression equation that we estimated earlier can now be drawn on this scatter diagram as a straight line that passes through the middle of this point. So this line is known as the regression line or the line of best fit. In the next lesson, we will explore the statistical properties of these OLS estimates.